Europe is by far the most well-known and discussed continent in the world, yet many of its borders hide very unknown cultures. With a history as complex and as downright evil as Europe's, it's easy to see why we gloss over many unique regions. Europe is a large culmination of different ethnicities and kingdoms. I'm not even getting in to you guys. Today, I want to look at three unique and obscure regions of Europe to see what they have to offer. We start out in Poland. We don't really know Polony for much other than it always being cloudy and writing self-insert fanfiction about Hungary. So it makes a lot of sense why people may overlook the country's more unique ethnic groups. Let's go to the southwest and take a look at Silesia, a very beloved region of Europe. Poland has 16 vo 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 Never mind these. This region right here is known as Silesia. This region spans three uh, states and is also a part of Germany and the Czech Republic. Ask anyone who knows what Silesia is and they'll tell you all Silesia is known for is they have a lot of mines and enjoy mining and have a minor sports club and just everything mines. But Silesia is so much more than mines, as it also has a very in-depth history. Let's talk about the amazing history of Silesia. During the 10th century, this region known as Silesia joined together with Poland. Oh, um, yeah, that's most of it. Silesia was invaded a few times, most notably by German Prussia in World War I, and had to fight for independence multiple times. Which is pretty surprising, because if you know anything about European history, that it's a very stark difference from Poland. The people of Silesia have rallied before for independence, and honestly, I think it's a good idea. Silesia has a very diverse economy to thrive off of. It's got many markets such as coal mining, sand mining, industry, gravel mining, pollution, and being a part of Pol- oh wait, not that. Okay, independence may be too much of a stretch, so they try to push for simply more autonomy. Are they gonna get it? Nah. The Polish government prefers nationalism to regionalism and doesn't want any threat of secession. Many Silesians are consistently fighting for their recognition, and many find them to be Silesian first and Polish second. Silesia is centered around the city of Katowice, a city known for its amazing mines, and even a mining museum. Let's go! There's also the city of Wrocław. This city has the biggest travel ban in all of Europe because it's infested with gnomes. Auschwitz is also there, and that's pretty important. They speak a unique language known as Silesian, which is very similar to Polish, but adds a bunch of symbols to the words, making it even harder to read. I'm stroking out. But it's not commonly spoken anymore, as Silesian culture has been really integrated with Polish culture for a long time. So maybe Silesia is mostly that mining state, but it should not take away from the unique landmarks and people. There is also this region known as Pomerania in the north. Let's ask this Pomeranian about the region. Do you like having no sunlight? Do you like having no nighttime? If so, let's make our way over to the north of Scandinavia near... <sighs> Finnmark, and check out the land of the Sami people, Satmi. Satmi is a region in northern Scandinavia spanning Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Russia. This region itself is larger than most European countries, but with less than 100,000 Sami people. Because of its location in the far north, the winters have the sun disappear for months at a time, and the sun never leaves in the summer for months at a time. Also, it's cold year-round, so you're never really winning here. The Sami people are a mix of native ancient civilizations, Siberian immigrants, and Finno-Ugric-speaking immigrants, who traveled between either Satmi or Kudva Vingre. Just like you can't separate Silesians and their pickaxes, you can't separate the Sami from reindeer. In the past, when they were nomadic, they would follow the reindeer's migration. They would set up where the reindeer would graze the grass, and they would make their shelter and clothing from their hides. They would milk them, and then you would use them to help hunt and fish. In fact, according to a Sami creation myth, a great white reindeer sacrificed itself to create the world, with its fern horns creating the forests and mountains and much more. 
Sami consists of nine different languages, and they all have plentiful amounts of words for different reindeer. Bozu is reindeer but only tamed ones. Limi is a short, fat female reindeer. Skaldu is a reindeer with a big head. Busat is a reindeer with one very large testicle. Razva, sad reindeer. They are known to be one of the original inventors of skiing, and they would often walk around and travel on top of skis. They even had these reindeer skin boots with little hooks to attach to skis. Can you imagine just seeing a group of nomads skiing with a group of reindeer? These guys are so cool. They have these famous reindeer skin drums, one of the most famous symbols of Sami culture. It would often accompany their singing known as yoiks, a very pleasant form of singing that I actually recommend. They used these drums and yoiks to put people in trances. These members known as the Noaidi were believed to have the ability to travel between worlds to communicate with spirits to help cure disease and solve problems. They were seen as powerful wizards and were totally not feared by other settlers. They're so powerful, a single image of them crashed my entire computer. Most of Satmi is full of small villages and plenty of museums of Sami history and tons of Satmi nature to discover. But all the coolest attractions are in Finland specifically, in the large state of Lapland. Home of Santa Claus! You can see Santa Claus Village and even his office for some reason. Of course you'll try to see the Northern Lights. You have this really cool frozen canyon. The Hotel Snow Village? Okay, this is actually really cool. Oh. Oh my god. I- Ice carding? What? So it's clear the Sami are the coolest part of all Scandinavian history, but lately the Sami have struggled to maintain their identity, as once the land of Sami was incorporated by the rest of Scandinavia, they have been forced to identify as Finnish, Sweden, or Norwegian first, and speak those languages and follow their religion. They've also had a major stake in climate change activism, protecting local landmarks and promoting renewable energy, which has certainly not been easy. But as of late, the Sami have been making a large comeback, with more progressive movements to fix climate issues, maintain the reindeer population, have spots in government, and overall bring back their identity. Sami is the real deal. I don't know any group known for chilling as hard as the Sami. Last but not least, we head on over to Italy. It made sense to me to find some unique cultures from Italy, as the Kingdom of Italy is a large mixture of many states and kingdoms unified together. Let's head to the northeast, to the land of Friuli. Hopefully, somewhere a lot warmer than the last two. Ah, that's better. Unlike the first two regions we've discussed, Friuli is entirely in Italy. Although it spans multiple regions, it mostly lies in the region of Friuli Venetia Guilia, a semi-autonomous region which spans four provinces. Friulians are a mix of Italian, Austrian, and Slovenian, while many speak in the Friulian language, which is a language similar to Swiss and French. This region was formerly a prominent state in Rome, and to this day you can find the city of Aquileia, one of the largest cities of the empire, and of which is the largest discovered Roman city to be excavated. Now the region centers around the city of Trieste, located right along the ingrown ball hair of Italy, and it's known for being a large port city. I was surprised this city had such a large port, considering its location in the north, where the entirety of the east coast could be a port to these countries. But the region was also formerly part of Austria-Hungary, and was the empire's only major port. After Austria-Hungary fell in former occupation from the Habsburgs, Friuli became a part of Yugo... Yugoslavia? W wait a second. This region is in the Balkans? I said I wasn't going to talk about you guys! Yeah, so I guess this region lies within the Balkan Mountains. Well, fine. We'll keep doing it anyway. This region is a major hodgepodge of ethnicities, so they don't have much that's truly distinct. Other than beauty, of course, dang! Look at these cool castles! Don't go in that one! Well, cities like Trieste and Udine seem really nice, I was most impressed by Civitale del Friulia, a UNESCO heritage site full of history. There's also Grotta Gigante Cave, which is the deepest cave able to be visited by tourists at 100 meters deep, and it is not completely horrifying. Oh god. Now, I'm not that often interested in the food of many places like some people, but come on! This is Italy! This place has to have some amazing, delectable Italian dishes. 
like pasta, lasagna, pizza, and ham. What, you don't know about Italian ham? Come on. They love ham so much that they have an entire festival known as the Aria de Festa Pig Festival, where farmers will let their pigs roam and play. Friuli has everything Europe. Mountains, museums, wine, architecture. If you like Europe things, you'll love Friuli. It makes it a little hard to stand out, but anyone from Friuli wears their home and history like a badge of honor. For this region has something special for everyone. Every corner of Europe has something interesting to learn about and discover, and it was a real treat getting to learn about some of the lesser known parts of the continent. If you live somewhere in Europe and not many people know about it, or just know some spots I missed, just let me know in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.